If you look at the bones in the human hand, the way they're constructed and put together, their, their structure and positions, and you compare that to a bat's wing or a porpoise's flipper uh, or any number of other vertebrates, the structure and position of the bones are actually strikingly similar. You can sort of match them up one for one. And uh, this was recognized before Darwin by pre-Darwinian biologists and called homology. It's different from another sort of similarity called analogy, which is that, say, between a bat's wing and a butterfly's wing. Although they're both wings and they're both used for flying, the internal structure of the bat's wing is quite different from that of a butterfly, radically different. And so analogy was not used to classify organisms, whereas homology was. When Darwin came along, he attributed homology to descent from a common ancestor. So common ancestry rather than common design. And this was at the core of his theory. He considered homology some of the best evidence for his theory, these sort of similarities in structure and position. And in fact, that's how paleontologists arrange fossils, depending on their anatomical similarities and differences. Even for the molecular comparisons, we're still talking about homology in the sense that we're comparing similarities and differences of, in this case, DNA sequences or protein sequences. So homology is at the heart of the evidence for Darwinian theory that is, descent with modification from a common ancestor. One problem with the reliance on homology as evidence for Darwin's theory is that we have some things that appear to be homologous, but which we know or we believe do not come from a common ancestor. For example, the human eye and the eye of an octopus are actually quite similar, and yet nobody believes that the common ancestor of humans and octopuses had an eye like that. So there are cases, there's actually many cases in the biological world, of structures that appear to be homologous, but which do not come from a common ancestor. Well, Darwin's followers sort of finessed the problem by redefining homology as similarity due to a common ancestor. So instead of similarity of structure and position, homology was now similarity due to common ancestry. The problem with that move is that if you define homology in, term, in terms of common ancestry, you cannot then turn around and say that it's evidence for common ancestry, because that's circular reasoning. In effect, you're saying homology is due to common ancestry, which is due to common ancestry. So logically speaking, once you define homology in terms of common ancestry, you cannot use it as evidence for common ancestry. Although I wrote icons 10 years ago, uh, it took many biologists a long time to realize this, but recently, Richard Dawkins, an outspoken defender of Darwinism, in his book, The Greatest Show on Earth, recognized this problem, that you cannot use a word that's defined in terms of common ancestry as evidence for common ancestry. So Dawkins' solution is to use another word, homeomorphic. So we don't talk about homology now, we talk about homeomorphism. Well, it's a nice try, but it doesn't really solve the problem. The problem is still, how do you use similarities and differences to show common ancestry as opposed to common design? Is this the only way to explain uh, the, uh, the, the data that we see? Is that the only way to interpret those observations? And I mean, based on what yeah. most educational programs, uh, textbooks, uh, uh, we see, the answer seems to be yes. yes. There's only one way to explain There's this no stuff, other right? possible way to explain it. Yeah, but there is a far better way to explain these things, right? Uh, and that's, that's a common designer. Similarity in, in living things because of a common designer. And, uh, and that makes sense from even the things that we create, in a sense, right? Right, yeah. If we think of a Porsche and the, uh, the VW Bug, that, that, uh, that, the Beetle car, yeah. both have <laughs> air-cooled, flat, horizontally opposed, four-cylinder engines in the back, independent rear <coughs> suspension, two doors, a trunk in the front, and, and many other similarities, or we could, we could say homologies. Right, right. Now, 
why do these two different cars have so many similarities? Because they're from the same designer. Yes. Right? Yeah. So um, whether similarity is, is morphological, whether it's a shape or, or, or structure or something like that, or it's biochemical, right? And there's many, many living things that share bio biochemical homology, so to yeah. speak. Um, it's not an argument for evolution over creation. If you just think of that, oh yeah, right. You know, intelligent designers use similar component parts in a variety of different applications. Sure. Of course there's going to be similarities when you have a common designer. Yeah. Yeah. And if humans were entirely different from every other thing that we have on the planet, uh, uh, and, and indeed every other living thing, would this reveal a creator to us? Not really, no. right? No. You, you, you'd, you'd think that there was maybe multiple creators. Right. Because one creator likes doing stuff this way and one creator likes doing stuff exactly. another way. I mean, if, if humans were entirely different from all of the other living things, how would we live, right? How could we eat, right? How would you eat a carrot if biochemically it just didn't, didn't match up, right? If it right? was totally different than our own biochemistry, yeah, exactly. We, we yeah. wouldn't be able to gain nutrients. We wouldn't be able to get energy to live. Uh, how could we digest them? Uh, how would you use the amino acids in, in, in food to, uh, you know, and, and sugars and all those things that our bodies need? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. So um, th this biochemical biochemical similarity, it, it's necessary. It, it, it's part of what you'd expect to see in design, right? Yes, if there's one creator, one designer, we'd expect to see exactly what we do see. Here are some other things to consider about similarities in living things. Certain biochemical functions are common to all living things. Right. For example, uh, uh, humans Human cells, in some cases, do many of the same things that yeast cells do, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, we share similarities in DNA sequences that code for some of the enzymes and proteins that do the same types of jobs in both cells. Right. Uh, some sequences, for example, uh, those that code for proteins involved in chromosome structure are identical to yeast. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it, we're going to put up a, a diagram here. And here you can see the similarities between humans and other organisms, the D DNA similarities. Between cat and a person, there's ninety percent similarity. That's that's a phenomenal figure. We should all be like cat people. Well, yeah, you know, or, or a number our, of jokes you could make on yeah, this. Yeah, I guess but, you know, cow. Yeah. You know, eighty percent with cows. Yeah, we're fifty percent uh, bananas. I mean, if this was like some kind of superhero show, I mean, you could be <laughs> cow man, cat man. I mean, this is phenomenal here. My, mice, seventy-five percent. Like you said, yeast, twenty-six percent. A weed, eighteen percent. Similarity? A weed, yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. I mean, what this would mean is cats are more similar to um, people than, than cows, right? Like, th they must have been higher on the evolutionary scale yeah. somehow. Or, or yeah, and I think it needs to be said that these, these, sort of, these sort of percentages can be varied depending on what section of What's, the genome you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, that's right. Now, continuing on with DNA, it, does a high similarity in, in two DNA sequences mean that they have the same meaning or function? No, not necessarily. Look at these two sentences. There are many scientists today who question the evolutionary paradigm and its atheistic philosophical implications. Sentence number two. There are not many scientists today who question the evolutionary paradigm and its atheistic philosophical implications. These sentences have a 97% homology. They're 97% similar, similar, but have almost exactly opposite meanings. Right. They're, they're similar, but they have opposite meanings. Yep. There's a strong analogy here in the way that DNA sequences can be turned on or off by a relatively small control sequence. And guess what? There's large differences in the control sequences between apes and humans. Right. Another serious problem for evolution, the front appendages of many animals are said to be homologous. Now here, here's that picture again. Now, if evolution is true, that means that the genes that code for those structures should also be similar, obviously. Right, right. If you've got similar things, you should have similar coding for those. Yeah, yeah, we should have a similar, similar coding for those. Right. <clears throat> but the problem for evolution is <laughs> they don't. No. They don't have similar uh, instructions here. So.
Biologists are learning that homologous structures can be produced by different genes and follow different patterns of development. For example, biologists consider the body segments of fruit flies and wasps as homologous. Darwinism predicts that these similarities should be due to the same gene, but in fact different genes account for the development of body segments in these insects. This contradicts the idea that homology must point to common ancestry. In the same way, many body structures considered homologous by biologists develop in embryos in fundamentally different ways. One example is the gut in vertebrates. If the Darwinian theory were correct, the process by which the gut is constructed should itself be homologous. In fact, this isn't the case. We know, for instance, that in different vertebrates, the gut is constructed in very different ways during development. In sharks, the gut develops from cells in the roof of the embryonic cavity. In lampreys, the gut develops from cells on the floor of the embryonic cavity. And in frogs, the gut develops from cells in both the roof and the floor. So you have a homologous structure in vertebrates that is built in one way in a shark, in one way in a lamprey, in another way in frogs, and you've got these very different developmental pathways converging to the same structure. This is very hard to reconcile with Darwinian common descent. These marine reptiles were built on much the same plan as you are. I would say in the past 20 years of studying this problem that biology is now entering what can only be described as a revolution. The problem of using homology to infer common ancestry was illustrated by, unwittingly in this case, by Ohio State biologist Tim Berra in a book he wrote to defend Darwinism against its critics. And what Berra did was he used a series of pictures of Corvette automobiles, 54 model I think it was, 55 and so on, and he argued that by comparing the similarities in these automobiles, it's possible to know without, beyond a reasonable doubt, that this is descent with modification. The problem with that is that everybody knows Corvette automobiles were designed by engineers. They were not products of biological descent with modification. So what Berra unwittingly proved with his drawing is that a mere succession of similarities is not evidence for common ancestry. It could be evidence for common design. So what I wrote about homology 10 years ago in Icons of Evolution is still true. You can compare similarities and differences, anatomical, molecular, whatever. You cannot distinguish between common ancestry and common design without a mechanism. And the more we know about homology, the clearer it is that we do not have a mechanism to explain it. So, you know, it's almost like God did this to deliberately frustrate evolutionists. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, here's a good design I'm going to use through different animals, but I'm not going to do it the same way. And, and it's, it's proof that the creation is proof of the creator. It is. We'll see you next time.